Welcome back to Morpher, a platforming mobile game that uses tilt controls. This month I've been changing how my platforms work, using some kind of cool math in the process. Given the namesake, a pretty staple element of most platformers is the, well, platforms. There are two main types of platforms, those you can jump through and those you can't. Think of how in Super Mario, you can't jump through the bricks, but you can still jump through other platforms and land on top of them. Other games have a variety of platforms, some move, and sometimes they don't even look like platforms. Regardless, there are two types. Morpher currently only has the latter. So, let's change that. While 2019 is the year Unity started taking 2D development seriously, platform effectors have been around for a long time. It's actually really simple to make these, and it works with most 2D colliders, not just the 2D edge collider. But I don't want players to run into the sides of my platforms, so I'm only adding the edge collider here. Then you add a platform modifier, and make sure to check the used by modifier box on your 2D collider, and honestly it works right out of the box. There are some other settings here for edge collision detection, but I'm not going to add that right now. With this, we have a super simple platform that the player can jump through now. Not having to duck out of the way of a platform makes the movement feel a lot more fluid, and it just feels like the player is in control of where they jump. They don't have to worry about enemies blocking a path or something. Now, the way I've been rendering the player sprite is so that it appears behind the terrain. It just gives it the look of really digging into the ground when they roll. I could have the player always stay behind the platforms, even when they jump through, but something just didn't look right with that. And while I could fix this by just checking the player's height to see if they are above a platform and then adjusting the render order, I had some bigger plans. You see, I wanted to implement the one-way platforms into my slopes. In general, if I could get one-way slopes to behave, it would open up a lot of possibilities for me when designing levels. But this rendering problem had me stumped. I couldn't really just check to see if the player was above the slope object. Because the player could appear to be above the slope at one point, but technically be under it still, and so would render in front of it with my old system. I tried looking at what other games had done, and I didn't really get any help. Most games just render the player in front always. In fact, I couldn't find any games going for what I wanted. So, I got to digging into the collider properties and the scripting API. If I could just get a hold of the points along the slope of each collider, then I could check if the player was above each point rather than the whole object. If the player were on that same lower section now, the game could register them as technically above the slope and so render them behind the sprite. Thankfully, I already had access to these points in the 2D Edge Collider. By just accessing the array of points, I can check if the player's position is above each one. And then I realized another problem. If I just iterate through each point and check the player's position, I basically run into the same issue as before, only this time the player disappears halfway through the top portion of the slopes. What I would have to do is split my slopes into different regions, and then check to see if the player was above the lines connecting the points in each region. Depending on the region the player is currently in, the game only checks these two points. So now, I just had to figure out how to calculate the lines connecting each point. There's actually a handy mathematical formula called the point-slope form of a line, and exactly all you need is two points. The formula itself only needs one point, it doesn't matter which one we use, and then we can solve for any point along the line. However, this portion is multiplied by the slope of the line, but if you remember from your Algebra 1 class, the slope is just the rise over the run, which again, we can easily find by subtracting these same two points. We can now use this formula to solve for the height of the slope at any given x location. And we actually have an x location, and that's the player's x position. The value this equation spits out is on the line, so you can see that depending on where the player is, the output is along the slope. 
I just compare the difference between the player's actual Y position versus the Y position of the line. If the player is above, this will be positive, and if they're below, it'll be negative. And with that, I had a working one-way slope platform that rendered in front of the player. I feel like these new platforms are going to open up a lot of vertical space for the player to explore, uh, something I've struggled with before. I even have a level that is entirely vertical, and it's pretty difficult to navigate with the old platforms. Now, I've already come up with some new puzzles and obstacles that use the one-way platforms, and they're really fun to move around with. Hopefully you've enjoyed that deep dive into my development process. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.